Hello friends, welcome back to another episode here on the channel. I hope you're all doing great and for anyone new to the channel, my name is Lee. Today we're going to be continuing on with the brand new rule set Series 9 VGC content here on the channel. We've got a brand new team to feature today and it is going to be based all around GMAX Center Scorch. So, it's a Pokemon we haven't actually featured on the channel yet. Uh, we didn't get around to featuring it in Series 7, which is a little bit sad, but we are back with Series 7 rules for Series 9. So, it is the perfect chance to kind of feature it and it is a very good Pokemon in a lot of respects. It's got residual damage from its G-Max move uh, that you get through the, the Fire Lash. Uh, you obviously don't get the Sun, but the residual damage every turn is just so worth it. It's got great typing. It matches up well against things like Venusaur and a bunch of other stuff in the format. So it can really do a job. Uh, we've kind of got the rounded off team with Celesteela, Grimmsnarl, Garchomp with the Life Orb there. That's kind of flavor of the week at the moment. Uh, Tapu Fini and then Rillaboom. So the last slot's kind of interchangeable. You could throw an electric type on there, but I just felt like the priority that you get with, with Rillaboom, the, the grassy terrain as well, uh, and that additional fake out uh, support, I think is probably just a little bit better maybe on something like this team potentially a lot of weakness to uh flying types but we do have ways to kind of help out with that you know we've got the rock type move on center scorch cobra berry there and then we've got meteor beam on celestial that we can take advantage of as well lots of options to dynamax things uh so it should be a fun episode today we'll have a couple of games with the team as we always do and then we'll throw up the rental at the end just to kind of refresh you if you want to try it out for yourselves there is a poker piss there's always down in the description below and without further ado friends let's get into our first match of today okay first up today we have a team of reggie alecki dusclops tapu finny glastria Incineroar and Amoongus. Very heavy orientated trick room looking team uh, kind of basing itself off the Glastria the Dusclops combination there. Uh, it's going to be a big threat for us for sure. We've got to capitalize and try and take advantage of the fact that there'll be no trick room for at least a turn because uh, we've not got really too many ways to kind of prevent the trick room going up especially on the Dusclops. We don't have Taunt throughout the team so that's going to hinder us a little bit so we have to expect the trick room going up and kind of prepare for that. The Amoongus can be a little bit awkward of course with that spore redirection make things a little bit tricky to get around but Center Scorch here definitely something that we can kind of fall back on um, and now I think we probably need Tapu Fini for ourselves just for the terrain support so we don't get like subjected to spores and things like that if the trick room and when it does go up um, it also helps us out a little bit against something like Incineroar and you know just gives us a little bit of a method to slow things down. I think what we'll do is we will go Grimmsnarl. It's kind of like what's our fourth Pokemon here? Is it Garchomp? Garchomp could be a very good option indeed. I think it probably is going to be Garchomp. I think I'm going to go send the Scorch, Tapu Fini. Garchomp. And with the, the white smog, we don't need to worry too much about Intimidate from the opposing Incineroar. So, let's get into the first one today. Got to make sure that we're taking good, proper care of our center Scorch here. Because the one problem is, obviously, my opponent can look at is Tapu Fini can come in, do some big damage. Uh, also, the Regilecki as well, you know, it's something we can't ignore. Big special attack damage that it can just throw out onto the field as and when it wants. So we are going to see Incineroar and we are going to see the Dusclops come up from my opponent. We're undoubtedly going to see that Trick Room set up for sure uh, from my opponent's end of the field. Um, I don't really want to take a parting shot. Uh, but I don't. I think... Huh, I'm pretty sure White Smoke will prevent the parting shot. But I don't know whether it's worth keeping Center Scorch out at the moment. Just getting a reflect up with Grimmsnarl makes a lot of sense. Um, maybe we could go for Max. Max Sandstorm, couldn't we? Or we could just start the residual damage. It's just I don't really want to... Yeah, I'm going to just protect here. Because then we're slowing my opponent down, you know? They're not going to get the parting shot off unless they do go after the Grimmsnarl here. Um... They're not going to get the parting shot off. It'll kind of mean they're not going to capitalize on all turns of the trick room if they do go after the center scorch here. But sadly enough, they go after the Grimmsnarl smartly, knowing that there's no protect there. So a bit of a passive turn from ourselves. But even so, if the Glastria does come in here, it doesn't worry me too much because it's kind of like, well, at least we can max at the same time uh, and we can kind of start, start doing some stuff. The only issue would be, obviously... 
proc and a weakness policy, which is never going to be a good thing. Um, we also got to worry about things like ally switch as well at this point. I don't know if we need necessarily the light screen up at this point. It might be worth just going doubling down onto the Glastria uh, and start that residual damage. Um, because I'm in the way, I can't actually see the um, <clears throat> what the GMAX move is called, but I'm sure we'll find out soon enough from the Center Scorch. I haven't used it really too much, you know. I've played a few games with it earlier, like Series 7 uh, on Showdown, but never really played it on the ladder. It's always a Pokemon that I really love the design of when Pokemon Sword and Shield first came around. Um, so, it's nice to finally be able to kind of to, to utilize it. See what this Dusclops does. Is it going to go for something like a Brick Break or a, a Rock Tomb into the uh, Glastria with that weakness policy? Potentially, it'd be great if it wasn't weakness policy. It makes things a little bit easier for us to uh, to deal with. And uh, scan send G Max Center Scorch. Definitely one of the best G Max look like looking wise, design wise, one of the best G Max Pokemon in my opinion. It's so small though, isn't it? It's tiny. Look at it. <laughs> Why is it so small? Why are you tiny? You should be huge. You should be bigger than the horse. I guess it's kind of long, right? It's long, but it's not big. Makes me feel a bit sad for it. Okay, well, it's getting the special defense boost, so that's fine. We're kind of primarily... And they are life orb, which is ideal. So there's the spirit break coming out. Just getting a bit of chip damage, which is ideal. Lower that all-important special attack. Um, and we'll get the G-Max Center Inferno. Center Inferno? A nice chunk of damage, right? Nice chunk of damage. Start that residual damage as well, which is always nice to see as uh, we, we hurt them with the fire spin. And um, we are going to be able to remove them from the field this next turn, which is which is ideal. Now, do they? <clears throat> I don't think they've got a way to actually knock out the center scorch. I don't think we even switch at this point, you know? I mean, we could reposition Finny, but there's not really much point. It's nice to keep the things we've got in the back kind of in a in a healthy state. Um, and yeah, we just go for another one, I think. I think we'll just go for another one. They may, may ally switch. They may max guard. No ally switch going to come out. I'm going to see Incineroar come in. Ooh, it's tapping to Finny. Tap of the morning to you, Finny. Um, okay, well... That's all right. We don't mind that too much. We've got the, uh, the big old vine lash that we can go for the next turn if we need to. Uh, another quake coming out. Yeah, so we'll take this pretty comfortably into the Grimmsnarl this time though. Concentrating down on that side of the field. So we're going to be able to remove Glastria and it kind of, it's nice because this shows exactly what a great Pokemon, you know, Center Scorch is at dealing with something like Glastria. I think it would have been a bit different, you know, if we saw weakness policy like I mentioned before. Its damage output would obviously be doing a lot more, but um thankfully life orb assault best kind of more common item choices on it at the moment anyway um tapu finny coming in and us catching it with the spirit break is is super nice and um, this makes this game so much easier for us to manage honestly uh, with the glastry out of the picture garchomp has a way easier time and we are revealing the uh the old leftovers on the tapu finny there but the residual damage is going to help us just chip it away, chip it away. And we've got one more turn of our max left. We can get rid of the Mystic Terrain as well, which is quite nice. Um, because we can go for the G-Max Vine Lash. It's not G-Max Vine Lash, is it? I wish it was. <laughs> How broke would Center Scorch be if that was the case? Um, okay, I mean, do they protect the Finny? I think maybe we just go for a bit of residual. G-Max Overgrowth, that's the one. We'll go for the Overgrowth into the Finny here. And if, if they do protect, at least we've got that boosted the next turn. No protect coming up from the Finny though, so it looks like we're going to be able to probably pick up a big one-hit QO. So Sender Scorch putting in some big, big work this turn as it uh, squashes itself together and uh, throws out some big mushrooms and picking up that knockout onto the type of Finny. Making easy work of a very scary call, you know? Um, Sender Scorch OP, I'm going to say it now. It's such a good Pokemon. I'm feeling a bit over the top, over hype, over over excited about it because I just like you know I do love Center Scorch. I, I love it. It's such a great Pokemon. I think it was the first outside of the starters. Sizzlipede was like the first uh, Galarian Pokemon I caught in my original Pokemon Sword playthrough. So it's always those Pokemon first time catching, first time you know in the team coming with you. Always have a little special place with me. A bit sentimental. 
Might sound silly, might be, but you know. And I think the white smoke ability on it is just incredible uh, because it just it makes Incineroar just just so useless. Can we go for some rollouts? Should we go for the rollouts? Because rollouts got like uh, obviously those of you that remember gold, uh, gold and silver, crystal from the from the good old days will remember that um, rollout. If you use it continuously, it has an increased chance. It, 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 it does it double its damage every turn, or does it do that anyway? Anyway, Grimstar Center Scorch clearing that one up for us. Very good game to my opponent. Nice one for us to kick off with today. And with that, friends, we'll jump into our second match of the episode. Next, we got Jesse, and they are playing the infamous team that we no one likes to play. It is going to be the Colossal, the Dragapult. Urshifu, Rillaboom, Rotom Heat, and Lander Asterion. So Rotom Heat in here over what would normally be something like Galarian Moltres, which is an interesting option, of course. It's all going to be about the Colossal though, isn't it? In this game, you've got two set of options. You've got the Dragapult, and you've got the Urshifu, and then you've got all the support and cast behind that and make things very difficult for the Pokemon that do well against it to kind of do their jobs. Um, <sighs> Garchomp's amazing. It really, it, Garchomp is very good here. The problem is, well, hmm, yeah, the problem is Intimidate. Problem, other problem is something like Dragapult as well. Um, so we're going to have to be very, very careful. I don't know if this one's a one for Center Scorch, if I'm completely honest. I don't feel like it really pulls its weight in this game. I think Garchomp's going to be the kind of star of the show, maybe for us, on a damage output scale. I think we need Finny to help us just get around things like Will-O-Wisp. Um, from the Dragapult in particular and then I think we will round up with Celesteela because I feel like Celesteela could do a job against most things on this team especially if we're in a position where we don't max Garchomp where I don't see a world where we're not maxing Garchomp uh, to be honest I think I mean, we've got the option to max Finny, right? We can max Finny, but the problem is max and Finny in this match. If the Rillaboom's still around, it's not really the most optimal thing to do because they've got an easy switch into uh, to Rillaboom, Grassy Glide, or Woodhammer, and Finny's is unnumbered. But we are going to see the Rillaboom and the Rotten Heat come out from my opponent. Okay, so this isn't too bad. I mean, we've got to worry about potential. Uh, <laughs> Uh, nasty plot, which is always always going to be tricky to deal with, to say the least. Um, hmm. Should we light screen? I think we light screen here, and I think we switch Garchomp to Celesteela. I think we get Celesteela onto the field as soon as possible. Now this might be, if they if they nasty plot here, we're in a bunch of trouble. But I think. That the Rotom has to feel a little bit threatened. Grassy Glide coming out. Doing some nasty damage. Now they're just doubling in. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. We'll deal with that. Because we're going to be able to get a Reflect up this next turn. And go from Meteor Beam into that, into that Rotom. Into that Rotom and do some nice fat damage. Now, what have they got switch-wise into a Meteor Beam? Not a great deal. You know, they have got Urshifu. Probably going to be the best thing, honestly, uh, that you could potentially switch in. But, um... Yeah. Is it worth going for the Reflect or the Scary Face? I think Scary Face into the Rotom, if I'm completely honest. No, we don't want to max... You just want to go Meteor Beam. Hope the Rotom doesn't protect either. Not protect. We, oh, we don't even survive. Uh, so we wouldn't have even got the Reflect off anyway. The Grassy Glide doing too much. Nasty Plot. Well, that's a bad, bad play from my opponent because you're going to lose your Rotom now. We're going to get the Special Attack Boost and we're going to be sitting in a, in a pretty nice position uh, to start getting rid of the rest of the team. The problem is, if we do see Colossal come onto the field, it complicates things a little bit, because then where do we go with our, with our max? Because, well, the thing is, Colossal, if it's out on the field, if it is out on the field, and it hasn't got Urshiku or Dragapult next to it, it's not going to be able to get that steam engine, so we're sitting in a pretty decent spot where Garchomp and Celesteela should both outspeed it. But we, if we're going to utilize Tapu Fini later in this match, we need to kind of prioritize also the Rillaboom. 
So with the grassy terrain up, you would think, okay, let us go Max Quake into Colossal. And let us go for a, we got Air Slash or Flash Cannon. Hmm. Flash Cannon's a more reliable one, but Air Slash will get the knockout onto Rillaboom, which will then just open up the game for something like Tapu Fini to do, do its thing. Um, and if Urshifu decides to switch in on that Rillaboom spot, at least Air Slash kind of covers both both Pokemon there. Let's see what happens. Let's see what this Colossal does. Obviously, we'll proc a weakness policy on it, but it hasn't got the speed boost, and I don't see it being able to remove Garchomp from the field. We are Life Orb as well. We aren't even Intimidate, so I'd imagine... They are maxing. They're going to drop. Go Max Quake. This might be the quickest dismantle. Dismantlation? <laughs> Is that even a word? It's a word right now. It might be the, the quickest dismantlation of Colossal that you'll ever see on this channel. Potentially. Let's see what we do. Max God! Okay, well, they're playing it. They're playing, they're playing a cheeky one, aren't they? Because they're going to try and get Urshifu in next to. Um, yeah, they're going to get the Urshifu in. Oh, if it is Urshifu, though, and you aren't sashed. Celesteela is going to have words. Got to have words with you. Let's see. Oh, it's the Urshifu, but it will be sashed. 100% it'll be sashed. There's the S-Slash coming out. Do some nice damage. Of course it's sashed. The problem is, like, I mean, is it even a problem? Like, do you go after Celesteela or do you go after Garchomp here? Like, I think you have to go after Garchomp. Um, and we're just going to Max Quake again. Now they're going to get set up. They're going to get an attack off. But at the same time, I'm just going to, I'm just going to Flash Cannon into, into Urshifu. Because I still believe the Colossal can get rid of our Celesteela, right? No, no questions. No questions there. But... The Colossal is not going to be able to get to knock out Garchomp in one hit. No way. No chance. The Max Volcolith, where are you going? Into Cellar? Celestealer? Has to be. Take it though. And then Urshifu's down. Garchomp is still around. Rillaboom comes in. And then we just... Yeah, there's no way they take this. No way. And then the Flash Cannon, more reliable here than the Nair Slash. Uh, and Rillaboom, I mean, we've got the residual damage to kind of consider as well, of course. But, I mean, we've still got... Hmm. Well, we've got the switch to Tapu Fini if we want the next turn, potentially, just to get rid of the grassy tree and give Garchomp's, make Garchomp's life a little bit easier, you know? And um, that's the big thing. Flash kind of coming out. Take this Urshifu down. Ah. <sighs> nice I'm just it's nice when you uh it's nice when you get rid of a colossal isn't it it's always nice you've got to deal with the residual damage of course which is always one of the things but it's just that you just get that nice nice feeling <laughs> like it's gone but Rillaboom is a different story you know I've got three Pokemon left and I still don't sit comfortable that I, like I'm in a great position to deal with Rillaboom just because of how threatening it is you know um now it is coming in the grassy terrain got one turn left I believe yeah, so it ends this next turn. So, I think we just go Rockfall, switch into... Uh, I mean, do we punish them for not... I think we punish them. I think I think what we do, we don't switch. I think we make the, the, the play to punish them if they don't go into Celesteela here. Yeah, we just punish because they have to go to Celesteela. Yeah, I mean, the battle's cancelled at this point. But I think that's a better play because then it runs out the next turn. We get a type of Finny in. Um, and then we can, well, we have to utilize Garchomp type of Finny to, uh, to deal with it, which we should be able to do between Rock Slides and Moon Blasts and whatnot. But good game to my opponent. Nice second win of the episode. We got to see a good mixture of the team today. Obviously, the Center Scorch in that first one, and then the Garchomp doing its work in that second one, especially alongside the Celestia. So that was a really nice mix 
of games for us to feature today so we'll hop over now remind you all of today's rental code for the team okay friends here is today's rental team just as a reminder if you would like to try it out on the ladder and if you do please let me know down in the comment section below i love hearing you uh, about your stories if you've got to master bolt here with a certain team that you tried out or if you've just tried it out and you really enjoy it obviously do the same if you try the poker pist in the description but um obviously with putting this team up onto my cart i've had to take down the moltres team that was in that initial series 9 kind of introductory video with the the five rental teams so the moltres one has been withdrawn if by any chance you want that backup let me know and we can work something out with a friend of mine to put it up on on the on the rental again and kind of keep that up for a bit longer but this is going to take place for now and uh, i think it's warranted i think it's a really unique team that's going to be a lot of fun to play in series nine uh, so if you do try it out have a lot of fun with it but a big shout out to each and every one of you for always coming by supporting the channel and hopefully enjoying the videos have a great rest of your day have a great weekend but more importantly take care of yourselves and i will see you all for another episode very soon so until then friends take care of yourselves and bye bye yeah.